Morning sports fans, once again you're catching us here in the midst of land yacht uh, work and today we're getting the heatsink laid out for our new super duper liquid cooled high powered charger for the yacht. Now <clears throat> those of you who have been crazy enough to be following the video series We'll know that we recently got the yacht on the road and uh, I have been, how should I say, gradually uh, expanding upon the test drives. And what I did yesterday uh, was my longest one to date, uh, which is just under 70 miles. And uh, the yacht did that absolutely flawlessly and still had plenty of juice left in it. So, what we need though, is a way to charge the car a lot faster than we currently have. I have at the minute, it's a very crude form of a charger and I just built it to get me on the road. Uh, just the capacitor and the rectifier setup, all controlled by the uh, trusty JLD 404 relay. And we're charging at about 9 amps DC. Now, that's fine for overnight charging. But I mean, let's face it, who wants to spend 20 hours charging the yacht's rather gargantuan uh, battery? Certainly not me. So we need a much more powerful charger. Now look, looking around, uh, some of the commercially available variants, as they would say, there are some uh, that would do. Hello. Uh, but they tend to be expensive, not very configurable, not very configurable, configure, config. They're difficult to configure. Therefore, uh, let me see now, I'm looking for... I can never get this right, C1 or C2. So this is our PFC. So this wants to be a booster converter. So it's going to want to use the lower IGBT, which is C2. So, to set our little board up here. Sorry folks, it's a bit of a interlude here while I get the spacing right. There's my C2. Here comes my PFC. Come on, baby. Come on. Yeah, it'll be close enough. We probably want to uh, move them around a little bit. Let's see, sorry, hang on one last second. This is turning into another one of my boring videos, isn't it? I know, I know, I know. So that's two, yes, that one's, that's the one we want. Yep, grand. <coughs> Anyhow, we need to build a charger. Let's just cut to the chase. No point screwing around, uh, though as I say, there are some out there now that are a lot more configurable. Um, the one that springs to mind is the um, oh, EVTV variant of the TC charger with the CAN bus controller. Quite a nice piece of kit. Um, but tends to be a little bit low on power for what I want, even in the 6 kilowatt variant and a little bit on the expensive side, sorry to say. <coughs> but that being said, if you're looking for a charger uh, to get moving on, do a hell of a lot worse. What we're going to do is build one because on this channel we tend to uh, take the long way home. So, those of you that watched the tree series videos uh, will remember that I built a variant of the EMW uh, charger as I was uh, being supplied in kit form at the time, and indeed still is. And they've, they've upgraded that kit somewhat, uh, but again, unfortunately, as fairly typical for me, it doesn't really fit my needs. Um, now, the beauty about well, there's, okay. The bad thing about open source projects is that they tend to have very poor documentation and support and such like. Um, and that's just one of the things that uh, we 
pull it up with. Uh, but the real advantage is that they're very configurable. In fact, a lot more configurable than anything that's currently commercially available. And not least of which, and it's quite an important aspect for me, is that if I'm going to build a car, and I'm going to invest in it, um, I don't want to be at the end of a long supply chain for some of the critical parts, like a controller, charger, that kind of thing. So if something goes pop, I need to be able to just buy readily available parts and fix the damn thing. And I can't really do that if it's a sealed unit, potted or covered in conformal coating and have no circuit diagrams and no freaking idea uh, what's going on inside it. So, it's enough of me going on about the evils of uh, commercial hardware. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what we're doing here. So, one of the things I dislike about the Kipform uh, EMW 12 kilowatt charger is the cooling. Um, they do a liquid cooled variant, but that only cools the power electronics, which we kind of see laid out here. They do not liquid cool the inductors. Now, these are the guys, and we need two of them for the PFC version. Mm -hmm, two, see, two. These are the guys that get hot. And now they do a reasonably good job with some very high flow fans uh, cooling them and that works well but I want to liquid cool them because liquid cooling is better I also need this charger to be small so it's got to fit in the yacht uh, the yacht's engine bay which is beginning to fill up with all kinds of parts and stuff and things and blowers and hoses and tubes and pipes and wires and motors and controllers and boxes and metalwork and other parts so what we're gonna do is a procedure that I used uh, quite well on the last charger. We're going to liquid cool our inductors. So I'm going to go ahead, drill out the top of the heatsink, and tap it so we can bolt on our power electronics. And I'll come back and I'll show you what we're going to do for the inductors. So stay tuned, sports fans. More to come. Righty, we have our heatsink drilled. Uh, we're going to be using M5 by 0.8 millimeter fasteners for our power electronics. So, just thought I would give you guys a quick tip on tapping. Cordless drill with some torque settings on a slow speed, particularly uh, when we're tapping aluminium. Let's give it a try. Get your cutting compound. Bit more torque. Bit more torque. I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking tap's gonna break. Probably right. Freshly tapped. Right, I'm going to go ahead and tap out the rest of them, then we'll come back and get on to the next phase. Alrighty, now that we have our heatsink drilled and tapped for our silicon parts on this side, we flip it over. And what pray tell are we going to do here? Well, this is hopefully the part that's going to work out for me. We're going to take our two inductors and we're going to lay them uh, on the back of the heatsink and we're going to have to do this uh, reasonably with plenty of space here so we're going to do that in something akin to that fashion now <clears throat> as a more astute viewer will realize simply bolting them uh, to the back of this heatsink would be a very bad idea uh, not least of which is they wouldn't cool properly and apart from that um, 
or they'd probably short to the heatsink. So let's address that last point first, then we'll get to the first point last, because that somehow makes sense. Okay. Anyhow, right. So what are we going to do? Well, inductors fit physically, so that's perfectly fine. So why don't we come along and say, you know, okay, that looks uh, pretty good. That's where I want to be. And let's get our punches. Let's get a punch and pick the pick a reasonably good center point. Um, in the two. So there is one there. Pong. And we can be good center point here. Pong. Then I'll go ahead and I'm going to drill and tap some 8mm holes there. That will let us use a bit of treaded rod, something like that, going down into the heatsink. So, once we have that done, I will come back and we'll get to the last point first and the first point last. So, Stand by for action. Alrighty, so, <clears throat> got a bit of a cold on me guys, I must uh, apologise for that, so all the coughing, spluttering and nasal sounds. So, second question, how do we insulate the inductor from the aluminium heatsink but still pass heat through it? Well, we do it with some of this material here, uh, which is a very thin, um, kind of a silicony gasket material and it is highly electrically insulating and but has very good thermal uh, conductivity properties. So we just got one of our inductors sitting on it here in a kind of a corner area. I'm going to try to take a marker and I'm going to mark around the inside first of all in my usual uh, highly precise manner. Then we're going to go around the outside, but kind of staying just a little bit larger uh, than our coils. So just nice and uh, precise. So once we have that done, we can then get our second inductor on here. So beside this one, just to try to minimize a bit of the wastage. And pretty much do the same thing. So we're going to have a cut out center and then we go around with our marker just around the periphery. That gives us two highly precise um, shapes here <coughs> that we can then cut out uh, pair of scissors, all very blue Peter. Okay, now that we have our gasket shapes cut out, <coughs> we can proceed to uh, lay them out, back of our heatsink. Hopefully pretty much center up the uh, inductor. On each one, just bend up the inner wire there. There's one, and our second gasket. Just bend that guy up, and uh, pretty much like so. So now we have our two inductors um, electrically isolated from our heatsink. So what next? Well next up <coughs> we have these two polycarbonate discs and all as I did uh, they just took a large hole saw so the sheet of polycarbonate and just cut these guys out. I think it's just some uh, six mil scrap polycarbonate that I had I just enlarge the uh, center hole to take eight millimeters. I did two of them, so one for each of our inductors. So if we then take a, won't be using a bolt, but just for illustration purposes, we'll be able to clamp 
the <coughs> inductor down to the uh, back end of our heatsink. Now, as they say in the TV shopping channels, that's not all. Because what we now need to do is to find a way to thermally bond um, our <coughs> inductors to the aluminium heatsink so that we can pull the heat out of them. Uh, so that's going to be the, the next phase. Alrighty, so back again. What we've done, we've taken off all our transistors from the uh, top side and just ran down some machine screws into all of the uh, treaded holes just to seal them up. I've also got some <coughs> long M8 bolts just into the three mounting uh, holes which will be ultimately mounting this assembly into the charger and in this case uh, we're just using them as a kind of an upside down tripod to actually hold the thing in place. So, <coughs> there are two centre holes, drilled in half M8 and uh, into those we're going to place some pieces of treaded rod, a little bit of uh, thread lock just on them because these won't be coming back out hopefully unless I've screwed up big time we've got a nut um, on there as well so once I feel that that thread has gone through the plate I'm just going to back it off maybe a half a turn and then spin down the nut uh, and get a spanner <coughs> And uh, see if I can lock that guy in place. Oh, why are some of my spanners down there? Weird. So, that is um, the plan. Uh, at least it was the plan when I put by the spanner. Ah, yeah, here we go. So, I'm tightening this guy up. Just give it a nip, just so that that bolt uh, can come free. We're going to repeat the process uh, for the second one. A little bit of tread lock. And uh, spin it in. And the bottom out, back it off a touch. Spin down the lock nut. Spatter on there. And just lock that guy off. So, there we go. I think you can probably guess what's coming next. Take our two gaskets, lay them down, we lay each gasket down like this, we take each one, pop it down, and then we take our inductors and lay each inductor down on top of the gasket, strangely enough. So that sits in here, like so. Second inductor, top of the gasket. And that doesn't look too bad. Then we can take each uh, of our locking plates, polycarbonate plates, slide them down top. Okay, those bolts are a bit long, but we can trim those off, that won't be a problem. Um, so that will be us able to clamp our um, inductors down to the heatsink. So, next thing now, we're going to um, get our heatsink sealed off and get the potting compound on the way. Okay, so as we can hopefully see, we've got our inductors bolted down. I've gone around the periphery of the um, heatsink uh, with a few rolls of duct tape, our number one friend. So, purpose of this should be becoming fairly obvious. And that we're now going to fill this void with this, which is a thermally conductive but electrically insulating potting compound. 
Now this is the procedure that I used uh, with the previous charger in the E36 and it worked very well indeed. So, I guess we're going to find out if lightning strikes twice. So, this stuff comes in a kind of a two part package, a plastic package. We've got to take this uh, separator off here then we can mix them up. Which taking the separator off is one of these, oh, that's how I do it, you just slide it. Oh. Slide. Sliders. Ever watch that series? Started out good, but then it kind of went crap. Ah, there we go. So, slide that away, and we can start mixing. The kind of best practice is to kind of pull them apart like this, then start kneading. Lots and lots of kneading is going to be required. So I'm going to knead this. And then uh, we'll come back when I finish kneading and we'll pour it in here and watch it go all over the place and burst out of the duct tape and hear me getting all kinds of stressed and, uh, you know, general, just normal stuff like, like that. Okay, we're back after a kneading exercise. I'm going to snip the top off this guy. I've laid out an old ground sheet here just in case things do go pear shaped. I'm going to start pouring, uh, probably at this end here. I'm going to start uh, pouring. Pour. Quicker. This is video, people expect results. Oh, here we are. Right, pouring has commenced. Whee! Oh yeah, getting some action now, all right. This could get very boring, so, you know, if you want to go and watch a video of someone falling out of a tree or something like that, then be my guest. But me, I can't take that luxury. I have to stick to it, guys. Hmm, I have a feeling this is going to take a while. I'm damn sure I hope it works though, because if not, it's going to be a monumental waste. But anyway, I think you get the, uh, the idea. I got four packets of this crap to mix and pour, so why don't we do the magic of uh, video and you guys can come back when it's all done. Oops. Stand by for more. Okay, so we're back. We've got two packets of potting compound poured in. So the plan now is um, we're going to let, let that layer set so it'll seal around the outsides of the inductors and around the um, the heatsink. Then uh, we'll come back, we'll take our two uh, clamps off and we'll pour potting compound into the center of the uh, inductors and uh, continue to fill this up until we have a nice, hopefully fairly uniform uh, surface covering um, Probably just barely up to the top of the uh, coils on the inductors, and um, that'll be us, folks. We'll see how this works then for giving us a fully liquid cooled charger, so not just um, cooling the uh, not just cooling the um, transistors uh, with the liquid but also cooling the inductors and the other wound uh, components. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and um, we'll be ba back soon with some more charger updates.